Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Woo! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for joining us here. On this here channel, we try to have a lot of outboard fun and do a lot of outboard related stuff. You understand. But in this video, the weather is getting colder. My days are getting shorter. And Kodiak rain, wind, and salt never, ever, 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 ever stops. So I've been doing some dirty work. Sometimes you just got to get down and get all grungy and dirt. And you say, what kind of dirty work? I'll show you. I'll show you. Let's get it. You in there first, Mr. Val Stimmy. Yama. Almost there we go. Let me just grab I don't see nothing pinched. I ended up using a little paintbrush at the end of it. Now let's see if it'll air up Ugh. at all. Like it's airing up a little bit. May not have much air yet. All right, she's there. Hey buddy! 
You like them peanuts, do you? His friend turned into a squirrel pancake. I found him out in the road. Squish flatter than a pancake. This guy's still trucking. There was four of them. I, I, I think he's the only one left. Like them peanut buddy. Normally he holds the peanut in his in his little paws and eats it. There he goes. Okay, they had this collar on here. This went in there, then they had this collar on here like that, and it was it had an Allen set screw. So I had to cut down, I had to cut down with Diablo that way, and then cut that way, and then I was able to hammer this off. And I'm going to go back with this very simple system, a washer and a pin instead of this stupid collar that just makes it hard to lubricate this but I'm first going to slather it with some good old anti-grease put that anti-seize on both sides There we go. Get it on there really good. Get it up in the hole really good. Then we can get this right in there. Oh yeah, I drilled a hole through that so I could put that and then my little pin. And now, and now anytime I want to grease that, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Three spacers. Looks about good. And a lock washer. 
on the inside. But first, a flat washer. Flat washer, lock washer, and nut. Oh, it'll be about right, I think. Thing all straight, pretty. More better. Hammer ride. Quick dry. Metal finish. Black. That's what it says. So, I need quick dry, and I just happen to have several cans of this, so that's what's going on there. That's what's going on there. Nice and thick. I do like that about it. Really thick, actually. But I ain't gonna thin it because I want it more. This ain't about looks. This is about Cody stopping Kodiak from eating it alive. The little muffler I had on my little ramrod dozer fell off and then I acquired this from a friend. So I'm going to try and get this somewhere about like that. But I want to get rid of this elbow and start over, but it's it's rusted on there, so I'm going to make some cuts with the uh, die grinder. Diablo! And that should give me enough looseness to get that off there. That's my plan. I still got plenty of thread left on that. I'll clean that up with a wire wheel and buy a new elbow. And this way I can get my uh, I can get my pipe. This muffler has these slots. And I've got a clamp that goes around here. And by taking this off, it's going to go like that. The muffler's going to go like that. 
and I can get my sizing right for my clamps and stuff. Then I can put the new elbow, screw it back on there, and have this size to put my clamp on the muffler. And then I'll put on the muffler. The mufflers! The mufflers! Well, there's my new muffler on the ramrod. What do you think? I have had the hardest time keeping a muffler on this machine because of the vibration of this machine. It's got a big old one lunger Kohler in there and uh, it shakes pretty good. But she sounds really deep throated now. I show you. I show you. Let's start up. Let's start the Rammy. See what you think. See how it shakes? That big old giant muffler on that little one cylinder ramrod. And it still sounds like a Harley Davidson. That might not be bad. Okay. I've got aired up tires on my outboard lift I got a lot of the rust off of it and uh, like I said I'm not going for pretty here I'm going for make it last a little longer um, the cool thing about that lift the outboard lift is it's just square stock and, and angle and stuff um, so as long as I, you know, the part the, on the sides and stuff is just 10. And then the rest of it is just angle stock, square stock, stuff like that. So I can weld, but uh, it, uh, it really rolls good now. And I've got new little casters on the front. The reason for those casters is there's a pedal right there. You see that pedal down there? And you can lean it forward. Um, I went ahead and put the new casters on there, but I, I never use that uh, tilt it forward thing. I, I just never use it. I, I haven't found uh, any reason to use it. <laughs> but but I put new casters on there. They're a little shorter than the older ones, but like I said, I never use it anyway. But I had them, so I put them on there. And then I got. Everything's all anti-geest. I put the geese. Everything turns in. Now all I got left is the appendages. Um, the actual part that grabs the outboard itself. And you can see these need some attentionis. You understand us? Let's speak of the spinous. Yeah, they need some attention too, but again, square stock and a pipe. It, I mean, that's the thing I like, and a bolt, or excuse me, a nut that has a bolt. And the bolt that goes in there, I mean, they really kept it simple. I thought I had one out here, but uh, it's just a bolt, and they welded a little piece of uh, round stock to it to make a T. 
right there. So it, this stuff is really simply built. The main thing is I got to keep the uh, pump and reservoir and all in good shape. So I always keep that in good shape. And uh, so I got to do the appendages yet. And here's the part that goes down on here and it slides down there again just square stock with that same nut and bolt system and then the arms slide on this so I still got to do them yet but I got the main body of it worked out, and I got a muffler. Hey, buddy, you need a mufflers. I got a mufflers. Well, now. We all know what it means when I wear the hat. It means somebody came a bearing gifts. Now. I could call it a cutie, but right now I think I'll call it an ugly duckling. Let's look. Well, there it is. Yeah, the little ugly duckling. Guy was going to throw it in the dumpster. That is one unique paint job. I don't know what he was going for there exactly. I sure don't. But hood latch things froze. You got the old green yuck. I'm sure there's a creepy crawly in there somewhere. What wants to get me? Um, pull start. That's what's left of it. Let me lower it down a little bit. So you can get the full spectrum of it. Okay, the throttle the handle, the rod, the aluminum rod that goes up through here, that's broke off. Um, lots of salt on the flywheel. Creepy crawly looking stuff in there. Uh, Carburetor is more white, crusty yuck than anything. So, oh, what to do, what to do. Boy, she's rough. Let's turn over though. She's a little on the rough side. So I think what I'm going to do before I get in the part out mindset is uh, I'm going to do a quick spark check and compressionis, you'll understand us, check. If we have spark and compression, you know the rest of the saying. So. Let me get out some test stuff real quick and I'll be back. Alrighty, I got the spark spider hooked up. Look at these two right here. Let's see what we get. Woohoo! We got good hot spark on both. Um, one thing I did notice on this is there are two separate types of coils on it. You've got the newer black one 
that has the push on and uh, then you got the old style that has the hardwired right into the resin there and so forth but I've got good hot spark on top and bottom hopefully you can see it So, let's get a compressionis gauge on that puppy. And see what that's all about. Now the candles I pulled out of here are QL77JC4. And neither one of them look like they ever been used, really. But the tip of this one, look at it, it was all rusty. So the first thing I did was went and got a, a different spark plug wire than what I pulled off of there because I knew the inside of that spark plug boot was going to be just total rust as well. So I threw a new spark plug lead on there real quick. And I got spark on both. Candles QL77JC4. They are the JC4. Let's see. Let's start with the bottom. See what we get. See what we get. Okay, we are on the zero. Let's see what we got on this bottom one. Felt like there was some boom boom there. Some compression on us. So we got 90, 95, 100, 105, 110. 110. I don't know if y'all can see because of that glare, but 110 on the bottom. Now let's do the top. Okay, we're in the top. We are on zero, zero, zero. See what we get. See what we get. We got 90, 95, 100, 105, in between 105 and 110. So about 100, what did I say, 110 on the bottom, and we got almost 110 on the top. Those are pretty good numbers. And this is dry. I have sprayed nothing into those cylinders. But now, I think what I'm going to do next, since I've got spark on both, and I've got compressionis, I think what I'm going to do is clean up the tip on that one spark candle, spray a little tri-flow in there, stick it back in my tank, and with that sun shining right, you guys might be able to see that carb, just how bad it is. Now let me unhook that. Oh. Can you see that right in there? Just how white and crust that carb is. But you know what? I'm going to squirt some tri-flow in the cylinders, hook gas up to it, see if anything will go in the carburetor, and see if we at least get a pop. I'll be right back. Okay, I hope the sun glare ain't too much, but you can see I got the half Milwaukee on it because we don't have a starter. Um, I put the quick connect on and squeezy the bulb, and gas did go in the carburetor. It felt good. So, I'm going to choke it. There is no throttle on here. That's all froze up. So, that'll be my, my throttle if it starts. So, you're going to see what I'm going to see. I'm going to turn on some noise. Probably just the tripod because I didn't even choke it. <laughs> Let me see if 
I can did was took out the needle here and then I sprayed some regular rattle can intake carb cleaner in that hole and now I'm gonna spray a little compressed air in there and just see if this can get her to pop to life there okay and then we'll almost squirt a little Try flow in there too. Okay, then we'll put the needle back in. Let's see what we get. What we get. All right. I'll put the needle back in and set it to two turns out. Put a glove right in there to hold the throttle open just a little bit. Let's see what we get. is one of these cases where this is the fence and this engine is right it's right there right there it's on the fence um Potential, absolutely. 
Um, but at what point, at what point do you go, hmm, it's missing a transom clamp. It has one transom clamp. The engine will start, it's missing the starter, or most of it. As I was running it, I was shaking it and stuff deliberately, boom, hitting it hard. Because to me, we hear the the adage, you know, uh, earlier I said it, um, if you got compression and spark, everything else is just, you know, a pain in the rump. Well, not necessarily so on these motors, on this this. 80s this one's at 81 I think um, in my case what can I get for this motor by the time I put a starter and I have them I have spare ones in my bone pile a starter a transom clamp the thing looks hideous um, there's a whining noise coming from uh, this motor. I can't tell with just my hearing and so forth if it's coming from the lower or the power head. Could it be that the upper bearing is just dry and, and needs you know to get run in again? Um, I don't know. It would very likely uh, be possible that it's coming from the lower unit itself. So the next step, if I choose to save this motor, would be um, to drop the lower leg on it. Um, restart it without the leg on, without the lower unit on, and see if I still hear that whining. If I do, then given the overall condition of the motor I would say it's going to be parts. If it's just a lower unit heck that lower unit may not even have any oil in it I don't know it's a freebie. So um, when I first started it it wasn't peeing um, but with the wire and the compressed air we got the blobs of salt out of it and uh, and she started peeing good and it was running cool anyway so I, I had a suspicion just for that fact that it was running cool that uh, it was probably pumping water okay but something is amiss with that whining I don't know if you can hear it on the uh, camera I, tr I you know I don't know if you can pick that up or not um, but the tiller handle is completely froze up on this thing the rod that goes to the tiller is snapped off where they commonly snap them off um, missing a transom clamp so you'd need a tiller arm transom clamp starter even though it's peeing good probably an impeller carburetor you know seems to be doing okay but it would you know all that would have to come off and be clean so this is one of those there's the fence. Which side will it fall on? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to... Uh, I will drop the lower unit and start it again and see if the whining, the incessant whining goes away. If that whining is coming from that power head, it, it'll probably fall on the wrong side of the fence. None of me. So, I'm sure this one's getting a little long with all the other stuff I threw in here, so... I want to thank you for watching. As always, you never know what's going to come into this little shop, and that is one more hack from Kodiak. Stand by for part two on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.